Hey there, everyone. Thanks so much for having me today. I actually love this topic. It's one of my favorites. Um, so we are going to dive right into this. I, I always start these talks with an introduction of myself because while the bio is fantastic, I want to give everyone kind of an insight into who I am and what I do. So I am Jennifer Tamborski. I'm your guide and your confidant in this ever evolving universe that we call digital marketing strategy. I am a marketing strategist with a twist. I'm also an NLP master coach and trainer. And I'm here to help you understand the intricacies of marketing and how to grow and scale your business. With over a decade navigating the marketing world, I've really honed the ability to simplify those complex digital marketing dilemmas into straightforward and actionable strategies. Scaling a business without draining your resources can often feel like a huge task for business owners. That's why I have pivoted from growing an agency to focusing directly on you, that ambitious business owner aiming to reach those high six and seven figure milestones in your business. I'm here to arm you with the strategies and insights and tactics that will help you to create success in those business. For those of you that are just getting to know to me, I also like to give you a little bit of glimpse behind this. Beyond being a digital marketing strategist, I'm the mom of three incredibly amazing, almost adults. And I was, as I was telling Colleen, they are my reason for everything. I'm also a mom, a wife, and of dang near 25 years. My digital marketing journey actually started 19 years ago with the arrival of my second child. And since then, I've navigated all the highs and lows of the digital marketing la landscape, running the, the agency, understanding firsthand the confusion and challenges my clients face when it comes to digital marketing strategies. And here's the twist. My background as an NLP coach gives me a unique expertise in understanding how people think how they process information, both my clients and their audience. And it enables me to craft, to help them craft marketing and messaging that truly resonates. This insight is a powerful tool that I use in my toolbox to help tailor marketing strategies that don't just reach your audience, it speaks directly to them on a personal level, ensuring your message converts. So today, we are diving into one of my favorite topics, which is relationship marketing. This is all about forging a deeper connection with your ideal clients. And honestly, I think it can be the key to growing your business, increasing your revenue, and scaling your impact. So let's get started. So have you ever felt like just another checkbox on somebody's sales list? You click on an ad, and you immediately sense it was all about the sale with no real connection. I know I have, and you're not alone in this. As business owners, we often dive into the worlds of product, service, and solutions, hoping to grow our business. And yet, oftentimes, we feel ourselves lost in a sea of transactions, craving something more personal, more real. In the hustle to expand our business, it's crystal clear Customers aren't just the heart of what they of what we do. They're the very soul. Sure, crafting top-notch products, services, or solutions that make our customers' eyes light up and give them results is crucial. But when push comes to shove, marketing, well, it demands something extra, a dose of genuine connection. Don't get me wrong, hitting up Facebook or Instagram or YouTube, it's absolutely tactics you should do. But let's be real, most marketing efforts today are missing a vital component. They're starving for the relationship. 
they're dreaming, people are dreaming of tribes of loyal fans, customers who stick by you through everything and became become that person who shouts you from the rooftop. The secret to doing this is nurturing relationships with them. So have you dipped your toes into relationship marketing yet? This is the key to really creating long-term clients and contacts. So let's dive into relationship marketing where I actually have five stages that we go through. And because I like to take marketing and drill it down into the most understandable concepts, I correlate this to dating your ideal client. It's a journey that's like a dance where marketing becomes artistry that connects on emotional le level and also uses the science to support your goals. Here's the thing about marketing. It's not, it doesn't have to be this confusing maze that most people discuss. In fact, it can be a completely simple way to connect with your perfect audience. Instead of viewing your ideal clients as a statistic, shift your perspective to building genuine relationships with them. It's like setting the stage for an epic love story where no like and trust are the key chapters. And this is why I call it dating your ideal client. In the heart of marketing, you'll discover a blend of art and science. And if you look at it from the perspective of creating relationships, it makes it easier to connect. It makes it so that you can reach your perfect partner. So we start with the introduction phase. Now, for a lot of people, when you think about dating, it, the introduction phase, I think, is done completely wrong. Because what you need to start with when you're thinking about in your dating world is who is it that you want to connect with? If you're using a dating app, which a lot of people do nowadays, having been married for 25 years, I obviously have not. That being said, my sister did. When you're going through all of the requirements and the outline of who it is that you want to connect with, it's going to help you create your profile in a different way. So this first step in the marketing process it's one that is missed the most often and it's overlooked because they want to get to the juicy stuff, the things that they think bring in. But this is the foundation of your marketing strategy and of relationship marketing. It's about being purposeful of who it is that you're talking to. What do you want them to do? How will they be successful? How will you be successful in meeting them? In the introduction phrase, I generally break this down into, well, a lot of pieces. However, three primary ones that we're going to dive in today. Understanding your ideal client. This is a deep dive. You want to know who they are, what they do, what they're thinking, what they feel, what they need. It goes beyond just demographics like age and gender and marital status. Those play a role in how you're targeting them. But most importantly, it's the adjustable things, the psychographics, the aspects of people's lives that are ever-changing and the one that you can most step into. It is the psychographics. So what are they thinking? What are they feeling? What are their challenges? Because I will tell you right now, 90% of the population looks at their life or maybe ignores their life, depending on who you're working with, with, I have a problem. They have this box of, I have a problem. Your job is to figure out what that problem is. What is it that you can create that helps them to shift their perspective, 
so that you can step into the map of their reality and help them through the problem to actually solve it. This diving really deep into your ideal clients will help you to move on to step two, which is creating your messaging. You want to create consistent messaging that captures your ideal client's attention. The word here is consistent. One of the things that I see um, business owners do often is constantly pivoting their message, which is completely awesome if you're dialing in. However, if you're trying to sell in one way or message in one way on social media, and then they get to your website and it's completely different messaging, that causes so much confusion here. So what is the key problem that you solve? What is that one thing that you do better than every everyone else? What is the solution that you provide to your ideal clients? I have a problem. Speak directly to your ideal client in a way they can hear. When you speak to the problem that you solve, when you connect with them with the benefits that they need, they'll hear that. And then they're more open to understanding how it is specifically that you solve this problem. Can you consistently and accurately and clearly convey that problem across every step of your marketing? When you're looking at your messaging and your marketing, is every step building on the last so that you're not detouring them down rabbit holes? The message needs to be clear whether someone lands on your website or on your lead magnet or in your social media or your podcast. Wherever they're connecting with their content, you want very clear messaging. When you're growing your business or scaling your business, it's always easier to focus on one problem and one solution because then you can clearly walk someone through that problem. Build this until you reach your ultimate marketing goals. If you're hitting 500 or a million dollars and are starting to look for other ways to grow revenue, that's ex that's one way to do it. But at $100,000 or in revenue or even $200,000 in revenue, it is so much more productive for you to be really clear about the one thing that you do better than everyone else. The other step to the introduction phase is understanding what success means for you. Think about it this way. If you were going on a trip and you were using your trusty old GPS, I mean, if, I don't, if I'm going somewhere where I don't know, I need a map to get there. That's what this stage is about, setting up your KPIs so that you know what is success for you. What does successful marketing look like for you? Why at this phase are you doing what you're doing? How many leads do you want? What are the key indicators that tell you that your marketing is working? If you don't set these up ahead of time, how do you know when you get there? You also want to set up your marketing budget here. And I know in the last training last month, I kind of dove dived a little bit into that. So um, if you want to know how to set up your budget, reach out to me. I'm always happy to have that conversation. But having the budget in this stage of your marketing allows you to understand, again, where your money is going. Is you Are you getting an ROI at the other end? If you don't have a budget, you tend to overspend. The introduction phase helps you to really create the foundation of your marketing strategy so that you can then step into the next phase, which is what I like to call the flirting phase. This is all about capturing your ideal client's attention. If we think about it from the perspective of dating again, 
it really is stage two of your dating process, especially if you're doing it through some kind of dating app, right? You're having conversations with someone. Maybe you're texting, getting to know them, or maybe you walk into a bar and see a guy and you start flirting with them there. Whatever that is, it's really that first introduction into getting to know you. The flirting phase allows you to provide valuable content to your ideal audience and start building that connection with them. It helps your audience understand who you are, what you do, who you serve, and most importantly, how you can help them. Because I will tell you right now, your ideal client actually doesn't really care about you. I know that's a harsh lesson to hear, and it's the truth. They care about how you can serve them. So in this phase, you're going to want to look at the micro problems that your ideal client can have and create valuable, consistent, consistency is the key, content. It helps if you develop a content calendar that can walk you through your ideal client's maze of issues so that you're able to break them down into micro content. Let's think about this. If we're posting on social media, think about it from this perspective. 90% of us scroll reels at this point. We are not sitting through a lot of webinars on social media or even a lot of challenges or anything that lasts more than two to three minutes. So when you're thinking about your flirtatious ideal client's content, think about it in what can you provide in a two minute or less piece. It is something that is going to capture their attention. What is an amazing, fantastic hook that you can create and something that is going to either educate them or just make them think, right? Sometimes that hook is enough to make them shift their head. It also, you want to make sure that you're including pieces that set you up as the expert in your industry. Focus on the delivery. Your content is only as effective as if your audience sees it. So invest in getting your content in front of the people who can use it the most, your ideal audience. Focus on getting them in a in front of them in a way they prefer to receive it. Now, while I was talking about social media being two minutes, maybe your ideal audience doesn't really connect that way. Maybe they're not on social media, Facebook, Instagram, those type of things. Understand where they're at. Where do they connect with that with you the most? Is it listening to podcasts? Is it reading blogs? Is it the short content on social media? Figure out which medium they prefer and provide it in a way they can hear. This will make sure that your message reaches the people that they want, that you want to reach the most. And a quick tip, if you're afraid of video, get over it. I know, I know, so many people are afraid to get on video, but it is the way the world is communicating nowadays. So learn that nobody is judging you. It's okay. You're the only person that is judging how good or bad your video is. To somebody else, your video is amazing. Step into that. Own it. The purpose of the flirting phase is to establish yourself and your business and your product, service, or solution as the thing that your ideal client needs to connect with. It's to help create your audience and to um, create a community with them. Investing your time here will help you to guarantee that you're building an audience that's ready to buy later. This leads to our dating phase. This is where so many people want to start. The dating phase is always about generating leads. It's about creating 
some way to capture your audience and bring them into your world. It's about them entering your official customer journey. Here's the thing about the dating phase. It can be done in a way that really connects with your audience and makes them feel like it's less of a transaction and more about creating that relationship. So when you're looking at creating your funnel, think about it from that perspective. Your funnel is your customer's journey. It's the thing that's designed to take your clients or your audience from introduction through to commitment. The process can be incredibly simple or it can be incredibly complex. That's up to you. If you know who your client is, if you've spent the time in the, in the introduction phase and in the flirting phase to warm them up and, and introduce yourself to them, the dating phase becomes much shorter. So when you're looking at your funnel, we often look at the metrics from this perspective. So if we go back to the dating phase, your KPIs, look at your ideal client customer journey. And at every stage, what is it that makes it so that you know it's working? The reality is that this piece of marketing, your lead generation, is where most people spend the majority of their budget. Most of the time, 70 to 75% of your marketing budget is going to go into this phase. And it is the reason that you need to spend the most time in it, creating something that is so valuable. Your audience wants to work with you. So kind of understanding what some of those KPIs in this process could be is essential. So I'm going to dive into a few of them right now. If we're looking at industry standards and your lead magnet is, let's say, a PDF or a download, uh, if you're using paid traffic to bring in leads, about $1 to $3 per lead is average. You know it's working if you're getting people in there. But here's the real kicker to that. It's not just bringing them in. That's the important part. It's what are they doing next? What does your email sequence look like? Are they opening it? Are they clicking on the things in there? What is it that you're doing that will help you to create that connection with them that moves them into the next step? So there are really huge questions around this. The first being, are you testing enough? It's better to focus on one funnel, one complete customer journey, and make sure it's working. And along the way, you want to evaluate every step because it might just take a small tweak to make a massive difference. The whole point of this is to take your ideal client from introduction to commitment. You want to make sure that each step of the process is effective and you want to make sure that you allow time to perfect that funnel. Your funnel will then lead to the spot that everybody wants to be in, and that is the commitment phase. This is all about buying. So while the introduction phase is your foundation, the flirting phase is your connection, the dating phase is warming them up and nurturing them. The commitment phase is getting them to buy. This is what we all want. If you don't, you don't have a business. Commitment is what we're looking for. And in this phase, if you've gotten them to this point that they bought, they've bought from you, make sure that the next step continues to create a relationship. Make sure that you have a very fine-tuned onboarding process, that you can help your clients feel special and included, whether you have a course or you're a one-on-one -on -one consultant or you have a group program. 
it doesn't matter how you bring your clients in or how you're working with them. The important part is that they feel like they are the only person that you're working with right now. You want to make sure that after they buy, they are as taken care of as before they buy and that they're going to end up getting the transformation that you promised along the way. So in the commitment phase, when you're building out your sales page or however it is that you sell your product, service, or solution, make sure that you're setting realistic expectations. If you don't think you can actually take them to a million dollars, don't promise to take them to a million dollars. If you can't help them lose 50 pounds, don't promise that you can help them lose 50 pounds. If it's something that is so out of the ordinary, like if most of your clients lose 10 pounds by working with you, focus on that or a different feeling or a different benefit that you give them, something that is realistic and attainable for them. In the end, it is what's going to make them feel like they've gotten everything they paid for with you. By setting realistic goals for your clients, as well as smart goals for yourself, you're better able to make this phase essential for your clients and make them feel like not only do they want to work with you forever, they want to tell everyone they know about you. The last phase is keeping the romance alive. This is the phase that I think so many business owners forget. If you think about it from a relationship perspective, whether we're in a long-term committed relationship, a marriage, whatever that is, keeping the romance alive is important. I mean, when I had kids, the romance went, it, it took some rebuilding. If you actually focus on your business of keeping the romance alive from the beginning, it will help to continue to give them a reason to buy from you. It's essential to continue to market to your past clients, to your current clients, because they are the people that are either going to buy from you or they are the people that are going to refer people to you. When you're growing and scaling your business, that word of mouth referral can be helpful. If you think about it, influencers are exactly this right? They are using their current audience that are raving fans of them to sell something else. Because it is so much easier to sell to someone who has already bought from you in the past. Keeping in communication with these people do, gives you an opportunity to do that. It also gives you an opportunity to build a value ladder. And a value ladder is what is going to take your clients through a whole process. So if you think about your value ladder from your client's perspective, what is it? What's that next step? What's that next phase in whatever product, service, or solution that you sell in their problem that you can solve? I had a client once that was amazing at this. He brought his audience in it for a course. He provided so much value in that course and he sold it for like two grand. Where he really made his money though was the next step because while they learned what they needed to know, the implementation of it became harder than they thought it was going to. So he provided everything they needed to know in that course. The next step was working with him in a mastermind so that he could help them implement. He did this over and over again. By the time we stopped working together, he had three or four levels of masterminds and he was creating 80 to $100,000 a month in revenue. The majority of that revenue was coming after that initial $2,000 purchase. That's the power of a value ladder really creating something that will help your ideal clients continue their journey so that they want to buy from you again and again. It is the best way to really create a million dollar business. So 
I wanted to leave plenty of time in relationship marketing to ask questions. And before I do that, I have a gift for everybody here. This is my profitable marketing guide. It will actually help you to create your own marketing funnel and digital relationship building customer journey. Taking all of these trainings, showing up at the Revenue Revolution Roundtable is awesome, but it doesn't do you any good if you're not taking action. So what steps can you create? I'd love to hear in the chat, what steps are you planning to do now to help you take action in your marketing? And my second gift for everyone is a call with me. I am happy to hop on a call to help you create a strategy to grow and scale your business. So head over to virtualmarketingexpert.com slash grow me.